Hi, my name is Brian and welcome to Rocket Walkthroughs. Today, I will be taking us through the coding process of the base requirements of the BDEP game. First of all, we want to fork and clone the BDEP repo from Rocket Academy's GitHub. We will start from your BDEP project in the Git book. Then we will navigate to the repo through clicking on the link provided. Now, on the left-hand side, you can see Rocket Academy Basics Beat That. Take note of this. Now, we will fork the repo. Look for the fork button on the top right-hand side. Click on that. After a couple of seconds, you will be redirected to a page that seems like the fork. The main difference is that now, your GitHub username should be on the left where Rocket Academy was. After you have confirmed that it is your username, Basics Beat That, look for the green code button that should stand out from the rest of the page. Click on it and a pop-up should appear. On this pop-up, click on the button that looks like a square on top of a square. This copies the URL for you. Now, go into your VS Code and ensure your terminal is in the folder that you are using for your basics course. Then, we will type in git clone and paste the URL we copied from GitHub. Now, hit enter and let the code run. Your new folder should be created for you automatically with all the files like the index.html and the script.js. Now let's begin coding our game. To start, let's open our index.html in the browser and open the console first. Now let's start by pseudocoding in the JavaScript file. Let's list out the requirements. This will be a two-player game where each player will take turns. When a player clicks submit, the game rolls two dice and shows the dice roll, for example, three and six. Next, the player picks the order of the dice they want. For example, if the player rolled three and six and they wanted the number 63, they will specify that the second dice goes first. The next player will then repeat the same steps. After both players have rolled and chosen their dice order, the player with the higher combined number wins. Let's break this game down into four versions to arrive at our final product. First, we will build a simple version that rolls two dice and returns the output for one player. The player can then choose the dice order and then return the final chosen value in the output box. Second, we will refactor the code to work for two players. Third, we will implement the comparison of dice values and decide the winner of the game round. And lastly, we will reset the game for continual play without refreshing the browser page. Let's take this step by step together. For the first step, we want to be able to roll two dice on the first submit click, and then have the player choose the order of the dice. We begin by declaring our global variables. Let's start off with declaring the game states. There are two states for this version, game state dice roll, where the player rolls the dice, and game state choose dice order, where the player chooses the order of the dice. We type these all in caps as a reminder that these variables will not change. Next, we set our game state to game state dice roll, because that is the first state of the game. Next, we will create an array called player roll to store the rolled dice values. Before we go into the main function, we know that the first submit button of the game will have to roll two dice for the first player. Let's first create a helper function to imitate rolling dice. We'll call it roll dice. We'll use the JavaScript's math method to give us a random number from one to six. Let's put in some console logs to ensure our function is working correctly. Let's return the random integer. Now let's call roll dice in the main function and test to see if this works. Great, now let's move on. Now in the main function, let's start by making a console log to help us check on the game state whenever we hit the submit button. We'll then change my output value to output message and set it as an empty string so we can call it later. Now we'll write an if condition to check that the game state is equivalent to game state dice roll. So if this is true, then we will roll two dice as we planned earlier. Let's write a console log to show that this if condition is running. Now we'll create a helper function that will roll two dice and turn a message. We'll call this function roll dice for player. Let's create this function now. We'll first roll two dice and store it in the player rolls array. We'll use a while loop for this. Let's ensure to have console logs written for this function. We will then return the message that the player should see. We also want to include instructions for the next game state. We will ask the player to choose between one or two which represent the order of dice they want. In the main function, let's assign roll dice for player to output message. Let's update the game state to choose dice order and return the output message. 
Now let's write another if condition to check if game state is equivalent to game state choose dice order. Now let's write an appropriate console log to check when this if condition runs. So within this condition, we want to firstly ensure we have proper input by validating our input. And secondly, to rearrange our dice based on the player's input of one or two. If the player inputs the wrong values, we want to tell them it's an error and give them the instructions and also show them the dice rolls again. Let's also put a console log in here to tell us when this if condition runs. If the player inputs one, we want to convert both dice values. We'll use a little trick to get the right values. We'll convert both dice values into strings and add them together. An easy explanation of why we do this is because if we add the numbers together, for example, four and five, we get nine. If we add strings together, for example, string four plus string five, we get the string 45. We then convert that string back into a number using the number method. The reason why we want to convert the value back into a number is so that we can use it for the value comparison later on. Now that we have written this, let's put in a console log to tell us when the game runs this if condition, and we can output an appropriate message to display the player's score. Let's copy and paste this code that we have just written for when the player inputs two. All we have to do is change the if condition value to two and change the order of the values from the player rolls array, ensuring that the index one is called before the index zero. Now let's test our code to see if it works. Great, now that this is working, let's tidy this up by refactoring our code into a helper function. Let's name this function get player score because that is literally what we're doing. For this function, we want to take in the player's input and output the appropriate message. Now let's cut and paste the logic that we have written into the function. Now I want to be more specific with my input parameter and call it player input instead. Then in this function, the output message is not declared. Hence, we can simply return the strings. Now we want to call the get player score function within game state choose dice order and pass in the input from the main function. Let's assign get player score to output message and return it. Let's test this out. Great, our basic game works and we have hit our first major milestone for our game. Let's save our progress by doing a git commit. First, get your terminal out. If you close your terminal, the keyboard shortcut for this is control backtick. Check that you are in your basic speed that folder in your terminal. If not, you need to cd into it. Now we'll type git status to see the files you need to git add. Git add your script.js. Then git commit hyphen m and write your a suitable commit message. And with that, you're done. Now that our game can roll and order dice from a single player, we will refactor our code to include a second player. Here's what we'll do in this version. Firstly, we will need global variables to keep track of the current player, and also an array to store the score of both players. Secondly, we will need to refactor our output messages to specifically address either player one or player two. And thirdly, we will need to write logic for the end of each player's turn. Are you ready? Let's go. Let's start with creating the global variables. We'll create a variable called current player and set it to one because player one starts first. After, we create another array named all players scores to store the score of both players. Moving on, we want to rename player roles to current player roles because this is going to be used by both players. Let's rename this throughout the file. Let's console log in the main function to check for the current player each time the submit button is clicked. Now we'll update all our output messages to refer to the specific player during their turn. Starting with the roll dice for player function, we simply need to edit the beginning of the string to welcome player one or player two as they take their dice roll. Next, in the get player score function, we will declare a player score variable to hold the message for the player's scores. We'll assign the returns from the conditionals where the player gives the right input to the variable. 
will then return the message addressing the right player. Before the return, we also want to store each player's score. We will do that by pushing the player's score into our all players scores array. We will be using this array to compare both players' scores. Players 1's score will be at index 0 and player 2's at index 1. We then want to clear the current player roles array for the next player. Now let's write logic for the player's turns. Let's start with the end of player 1's turn. After player 1 orders their dice, we want it to become player 2's turn. We can write that logic in the game state choose dice order if condition before the return statement. We'll state that if current player is equivalent to 1, then current player equals 2 and game state equals to game state dice roll. Now, because we are going to have another if condition for player 2 below, we want to return the output message here so that no other code below will run after this if condition is done. And we want to add a string to show that it is now player 2's turn. We can write a console log here to inform us when this if condition takes place. Now for the end of player 2's turn, we want to shift into a new game state that compares the player's score. On that note, let's get to the top of our code and create a new game state called game state compare scores. Now we'll return the output message, but we also want to add a string that instructs the player that the next submit click will calculate the scores. Let's test this out. Good job. Now that we've completed the functionality for two players to roll and order their dice, with that, our second milestone is achieved. Let's make another git commit here to save our changes. Once again, git add script.js, then git commit hyphen m and write an appropriate message for this part. For our next step, we want to compare the scores for both players. The winner will be the one with the higher score. Let's write this logic in our main function. First, let's create the if condition for game state compare scores and follow that up with a console log. I hope that you've gotten into the rhythm of doing this console logging. At this point, there are three main conditions the game can end in. Player one wins, player two wins, or a tie. Let's first make a general output message that prints both players' scores. Then we'll create the three if conditions for the relevant circumstances to append the appropriate message to the output message. Lastly, we will now return the output message at the bottom. Let's test to see if we get the appropriate output message. Great, now that it's working, let's copy this comparison logic into a helper function. We'll call this function compare players scores. We don't need an input parameter here because we are dealing with the global variable all players scores here. Let's change the output message to compare message. Now, let's go back to the if game state is equivalent to game state compare score condition. We'll call compare player scores, assign it to output message, and return it. Now, let's test to see if that works. Great, it works. We have now ensured that our game functionality works properly for one entire round of play. Let's do another git add for script.js and git commit hyphen m and write the appropriate message once again. Great job on making it this far. We're almost there. Now for the final step, we want to allow the game to be played continuously without refreshing the browser page. Let's create a helper function called restart game to do this. All we need to do here is to reset the global variables to their original state. For our game, this means firstly, current player equals one. Secondly, game state equals game mode dice roll. And thirdly, all players scores array will reset. Let's call restart game right before the return statement in game state compare scores. Do ensure that it is called after output message equals compare player scores. The reason for this is if we put restart game after the return, it will never run. And if we put it before the running of the compare player scores function, we will not be able to get the final score. 
when it is in between, our message has stored the necessary data to display the game is reset and we see the saved output message. Let's console log to see if the values have been reset and test to see if our game runs over multiple iterations without refreshing the browser. Nice, and with that, we're all done. Now let's do our final git add and git commit. Congratulations on making it through. I hope that this video has helped you see how we broke down a big project into small baby steps that we can plan out and slowly get through to the end. If you're watching this part of the video before doing the Beat That Redux, come back and watch this again later. Now we are going to push all our commits into our GitHub account and make a pull request. So first of all, we are going to enter our git push into our terminal. Wait for the process to be done. Now we'll access our GitHub page. On your left, you will see all your repositories. For now, you should only have your beat that repo though. Click on that. Now you will see that you've come back to the same page, your username, basic speed there. Now for pull request, click on the pull request tab and you should get this page. The green button that stands out saying new pull request, click on that. Then click on create pull request to come to this page. Title your pull request, fill out the survey and create the pull request. If you see this green icon with the open in it, then you know that your pull request was submitted correctly.